Welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Uh, today I have the uh, finished uh, version of this castle project that has been ongoing. Um, if you're new to this project, if you're new to the channel, you may want to go back and see there's um, almost a half a dozen other videos showing some of its work in progress and some of the uh, planning that's gone into it. Um, basically the castle is uh, meant to be um, something uh, inspired by the Lord of the Rings where it's uh, you know, created by the forces of men and then uh, captured by Mordor and then retrofitted to reflect it, the new owner's tastes, if you will. Um, it's a large piece, so I thought I'd shoot at least a section of it like this as an experiment, um, just to try to capture some of that vertical height uh, that it, it, the piece is large. It's about 45 inches tall at the back, um, and it is about 48 inches wide um, along the back of the rock wall. Which extends, uh, which in the castle extends almost the full width of that. Um, so, and it uh, comes out, I should say, um, about 32 inches um, to the front of it. So it's a it's a large piece and uh, took a, a while to uh, complete, as you might imagine. Uh, the um, uh, castle has since uh, the last video has been added. And I'll show you some close-ups of this and talk about some of the details in a second, but. Um, Mainly, um, I've been casting um, a lot of these um, spires and spike work to add to it. Um, there are, you know, probably about 150 individual pieces that have been added to it um, to uh, change its overall theme and feel. Um, and uh, I've left them all a relatively, you know, sort of mute black um, to uh, reflect, you know, a lot of the uh, photos that I've seen of the, the Black Gate and some of the other structures, you know, they don't have a lot of highlighting. They're very stark and dark. Um, so I've decided to go with that as a look for these pieces as well. So uh, perhaps we can um, take a little uh, look around this. And at the end of the video, um, I'd like to discuss a brief bit about how I plan to try to ship this piece and uh, hopefully get this up early enough today that I could maybe even get um, a couple reflections on that from the community as this is going to be a particularly challenging piece to ship, as you can imagine, uh, looking at it from here. So let's take a closer look. Um, so, in any case, um, as I mentioned before, um, some new things that have been added, of course, all of the uh, spike work and adornments on all of the buttresses and on all of the towers. Um, also was suggested in a previous video adding an entrance into the back wall. Uh, now, this is a prominent feature in the Helm's Deep models, if you've, if you've seen those. And so I thought um, I'd go with something similar in style and kept it relatively architecturally simple, as this was a late addition and time was a real uh, crunch to try to get this finished uh, for the um, uh, needed shipping date to get it to the customer on time. Um, also, and uh, unfortunately my backdrop is not big enough to cover this, so you get a sense of uh, some of the background here, but um, also the, um, there's the flying tower and its walkway connection here as well. Um, so that gives you a sense of the piece as it's um, got a lot of uh, vertical height, and so um, while this may look a little crunched on the uh, final video uh, to fit on the screen, I wanted to give you a sense of it in this direction first. Uh, so we can start here at the front. Um, here's the finished ramp opening to the uh, front entrance main gates. Um, these doors took me quite a bit more time than I expected um, as I really wanted them hinged. So um, I had to build uh, hinges, first time I've ever done that, to um, allow the doors to swing open and learned quite a bit about it. This was one of the few things I didn't do on the test castle and I paid the price for that in the sense that I wasn't entirely sure about how to mount it properly into the wall and provide enough space for the rotation of the door, uh, particularly accounting for its thickness. And I had done some pre-planning on that and it didn't quite work out the way I expected so I had to do some modifications and some cleanup there. The um, wood I stained with um, a, a couple different, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know, chemicals. Um, one was a, um, a railroad gray stain, and then I went over it again with a Model Mate's uh, oil brown wash. And uh, the wood really picked up um, a nice natural color from that, and I decided to keep it, you know, looking like realistic wood, and I think it worked out really, really well. Um, 
I added, you know, obviously you can see I added quite a few spikes to the front door. Uh, these were um, some pieces that I'd cast, and I wanted to give it something that would, you know, look formidable against people trying to uh, ram the door or, I don't know, bring in um, large beasts to break it down, something like that. Um, the door stands nine and a half inches tall uh, and is about six inches, a little over six inches wide. The original goal was to have um, it be able to accommodate a Mumakil, uh, but I think now looking at at it um, with the doors open and this door unfortunately does not quite open flat all the way um, the uh, even with the if this were to open all the way I think with the dimensions here and the doors adding thickness I don't think the how to would fit through so um, that's it was a hope but not a requirement for the project and uh, that's a you know where it is at the moment and here's a little look under the interior um, which I thought was kind of an interesting look um, I kind of liked looking through the doorway at the interior of the castle and sort of adds a little bit of uh, a nice a nice sort of gamer's eye view. There's actually a tiny bit of touch up I have to do behind these doors um, before I pack this today, but that'll just take about a minute to do. So, so some of the design elements, I basically cast up, you know, um, a couple dozen uh, pieces, these strips of spikes, um, these spikes that go along the top of the rampart here, um, some other elements, um, and a few less of some of these larger um, spikes with the, um, uh, you know, other points coming off of them. And so uh, I didn't really know exactly where I would be placing all of those when I originally was casting them. So uh, once I'd finished them, I started adding them as I went around, seeing how many I had, where I could distribute them, and, um, and I feel like I had just enough to really get the overall effect that I was looking for. Here in the back you can see, um, you know, sort of carrying that theme into the interior. Um, now the uh, door is installed in the bottom of the tower down there. Um, a little tricky um, dealing with a couple spots where the joins of the wall meet the uh, the actual structure as um, the rock wall was done with um, a, a washing technique. Uh, this is popular with um, railroad modelers so um, once you have a plaster substrate then you wash it with um, subsequent dilute you know acrylics or other kinds of mediums to stain the plaster and uh, you know, I didn't want that to dribble onto, you know, the castle itself. be very difficult to protect all these surfaces from pooling liquids. So basically what I did is I built the castle into the shell of the rock wall and then removed the castle so that I could paint the rock wall. Uh, this was uh, optimum for painting, but it makes it, you know, there's one caveat in that the joins have a slight, a slight gap um, where I had to insert some plastic to create a um, sort of a lubricant surface to be able to extract the castle from it and protect it from bonding with the plaster. But, you know, then I was thinking about it, you know me, I always want to have some kind of explanation. I thought perhaps, you know, when they inserted these blocks, you know, they had to chisel out some of the castle and they left a little gap so they could slide the, the block in. I mean, it's... And it's not as it's not terribly, um, I think, noticeable or taking away from the piece overall. But it was, uh, you know, sort of again, you know me, uh, it's always something I'd like to improve in the future. Um, these were um, some elements that I developed at the very last minute, um, thinking that I might add them to the flying tower outside, and I realized they kind of just go better on the large tower, uh, so that uh, it gives it a, a little bit more of a distinctive look than the other pieces. Um, and uh, as I had mentioned in the past, um, I had pushed back this quite a bit, um, so there's actually a bit more floor space in here now, uh, so this should accommodate, um, you know, large models relatively easily, and gives you a sense of uh, what some of these towers look like from the top. And uh, here's the uh, large uh, flying tower on the outside. Again, you know, sort of just trying to carry that theme of uh, spike work running down um, some of the reinforcements and the buttresses and the dressings. Um, I did make two um, styles uh, that, um, so there's sort of more of a traditional sawtooth look and something a little bit more triangular here. Um, so that was kind of nice because it gives it just a little more variation. And I was able to um, co-op small pieces of some of those to add them around various places around the, uh, the structure. Here's a little um, side shot. So um, 
you know this is um, about eight inches deep um, a little more actually um, and that, that thickness varies uh, one of the ch challenges with the piece is to bring it up to this vertical height meant that it had a very um, steep drop off so that um, I had considered uh, maybe adding some flock to the rock to you know uh, collect on the upper surfaces and uh, because of the steep verticality of this it seems like it wouldn't collect very much and in the end I decided that the bare rock looked a little bit more fitting for the piece um, so it kind of worked out that way but it was a real challenge to carve it and to give it you know a nice uh, natural feel that didn't look uh, completely artificially vertical um, anyway gives you a sense of uh, what that looks like from the side here for the um, entrance into the uh, the cave itself or the the mountain I should say what I did is I carved in um, about uh, five inches deep so you can see the um, back rock wall which is actually kind of nice and it has a slightly different um, color and texture than the actual mountain like it's been a little bit excavated and then the uh, you know sort of my theme is that um, I carved it into the sides a little bit so that you know you sort of would go in and then go turn to the side to enter whatever passageways or you know storage areas are inside there um, so I think it, it gives it a sense of depth and it wasn't entirely unmanageable to add and um, really I think gives the piece a sense of, of depth and into the, the structure of the rock wall um, that really added quite a bit to it so I was glad that I added that. And um, what I did around the base is um, rock that to match the uh, rock wall in the back and let me come around remember where it's lit a little bit better here um, and uh, this was done um, primarily not only to unify the piece with the rock wall but also to give a little protection as um, the structure is heavy so having bare uh, foam at the bottom is going to be a real problem in terms of damage although this is foam coated it's you know still it's not as it's not a concrete layer it's just a, a thin protective layer so this gives a sharp edge protection along the bottom of the piece uh, for both the shipping and uh, you know general usage and storage and um, here's the uh, walkway and so I addressed the side of the walkway the customer requested that there be no uh, rails on the uh, walkway um, and this would allow for you know movement trays to overhang as well depending on um, what kinds of troops are placed on it uh, the only um, small glitch that happened with this is that this gap ended up just slightly larger than I had anticipated um, and that is uh, for some design element that I can't quite account for. It's not the foam coat that went in but there seems to be some shift in the height between these two pieces during construction so that this is just uh, you know like an eighth of an inch out of alignment and I'm not entirely sure how that happened but um, it you know for the overall expansiveness of the piece and the um, amount of uh, things to fit together that's a, a small concession to make overall so I'm not too worried about that and uh, here you can see um, one of the doors uh, going into the uh, flying tower and oh, let's see if I can turn this lens around oh, hey. and um, each of these towers there we go has a door added to it as well um, so each tower has a door access, um, including the main door, main tower, and the main tower has um, the stairs and the door leading out to it on both sides. Um, so it can be used as a, in terms of gameplay, as a way of accessing each of the uh, levels of the castle for uh, troops and, and movement, and whatnot. Um, so, a little hard to capture the whole piece in its entirety um, because of its size, but uh, that gives you a sense overall of how that uh, project came out. So as a final thought on this piece, um, it comes down to uh, the shipping of it, and uh, because of the number of spikes and um, you know relatively fragile elements that are on the exterior of the surface, um, the plan right now is to, uh, this will be shipping freight, um, so I'm going to build a crate for it, but I need to protect it in the crate um, from, you know, any strikes to any of the points and surfaces on this. And I probably will document in some brief way, um, maybe shoot a short video of how I've packed it, uh, because I think it would be, you know, 
you might find that interesting um, as it's, it's going to be a real challenge. Um, but with the, the ramp removable, um, I can, uh, uh, what I'd like to do is build blocks that rest against the non-delicate surfaces of the castle, um, you know, the white styrofoam, the beaded styrofoam, cut blocks that will extend out around the upper surfaces and then use those as the wrapping surface so that nothing actually touches the actual spiky elements or, or um, you know, any of the more fragile points on the structure. And then be able to bubble wrap that whole outer shell that the foam creates and then be able to place that in the crate and then uh, just have a, a ton of packing peanuts, I guess. I, I happen to have a ton, so that will, not, not literally, but... Um, so that is the current plan. Now, if somebody has any experience, um, you know, shipping anything of an unusual nature like this and they care to comment on it, although there won't be much time for comments because I, I need to get this out by tomorrow, uh, it, I'd be curious to hear, though, and of course for future reference as well, it'd be nice to hear. Um, I did take a look at a video of a guy who um, ships these incredibly ornate and very delicate glass sculptures, and he uses a lot of um, soft cushion foam and uh, tries to distribute forces as evenly around the object as possible and to um, avoid any shocks from the exterior getting into the interior of the piece. Now, since I don't have soft shipping foam like that, you know, sort of like, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Futon mattress type foam, that sort of idea. Um, you know, I'll be using um, beaded styrofoam, which is a relatively soft material in, in its own sense. And uh, many surfaces of the of the castle are are fairly resilient to broad, you know, surface pressure. And if I can distribute those pressures evenly, it should be fine. But it is going to be um, a real challenge to pack, and it's going to take me probably an additional 10 to 15 hours to pack this. That's my estimation. So I have to get going on it very soon. So um, I'm going to wrap up this video now, and um, hopefully you've enjoyed taking a look at this. And uh, once I get photos of this up on the uh, Terranscapes website, you can visit there to um, see some photos, and those will probably be a little bit more color corrected as I've thrown a lot of different lights on this to light this for the uh, video, and it may not come true um, to its actual color, so I'll try to shoot those a little more clearly and put those up on the site. And there'll be a link in the description when that appears, but it probably won't be for a few days. It's a lot. Questions, comments, always welcome. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and uh, keep your eye on the channel as uh, now that this project is done, um, I can get back to some of the other smaller things that are waiting for my attention. And so, you know, I'll be back soon with another video.